Hello and welcome. How difficult this year has been for us all. Here at Murray's, the team have tried their absolute best to fulfil the family's wishes, providing personalised funerals which have been adapted to meet the government's restrictions. In most cases, this has meant a small service with the immediate family. This has often meant that families have not been able to spend time together, offering comfort and support, and our ability to mourn and process death remains disrupted due to the ever-present fear of coronavirus. This being the case, we cannot truly measure the impact coronavirus has had on our grieving process, but we feel that this year, more than any before, we wanted to bring people together, even if by the power of the internet. We have all become familiar with communicating with our families using technology this year. So abiding with all current regulations, we have been able to bring this year's memorial service to you. Even though we've not been able to have the service we would have liked, we hope this service brings you all together to find comfort and support, knowing that you are not alone. Firstly, we will hear from Father Neil Peoples from St Joseph's Catholic Church with a reading from Ecclesiastes. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Father Peoples, for reminding us of the eternal nature of life and death, and that things are never truly lost. We now welcome Jill Walters, a celebrant who will share a poem that perfectly reflects this sentiment. I'm going to read you a poem called Tis Only We Who Grieve. It reminds us that even though our loved one may no longer be a visible presence in our lives, their memory still surrounds us. It's comforting to be reminded of them in every aspect of nature. They do not leave. They are not gone. They look upon us still. They walk among the valleys now. They stride upon the hill. Their smile is in the summer sky, their grace is in the breeze, their memories whisper in the grass, their calm is in the trees. Their light is in the winter snow, their tears are in the rain, their merriment runs in the brook, their laughter in the lane, their gentleness is in the flowers, their sigh in autumn leaves. They do not leave, they are not gone, tis only we who grieve. Thank you Jill for those lovely words. Pastor Rob Stiles of Burton Elam Pentecostal Church will now lead the Lord's Prayer and follow with his words of remembrance. Hello folks, my name is Pastor Rob Stiles from the Elim Church uh, in Burton-upon-Trent and uh, we're going to take time in a moment to remember those that we have lost. And you know, it's so much more than remembering a name, isn't it? Before we do that, let's 
Let's pray in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I join with you in this time of remembrance uh, with a heart saddened by grief myself. Uh, in the summer I lost my sister who I was particularly close to and for over 40 years we have phoned each other once or twice a week even when separated by many miles. And uh, because of my calling, I've been privileged for over 40 years to walk through the valley of grief with many people. And I guess most of us at any given time are aware of someone who has been bereaved. But you know, it's different when bereavement not only knocks on your door, but it comes to live and dwell in your living room. Grief leaves a hole inside of you. It may be you've said goodbye to someone you've known a long time and you wonder how you can go on living without them. You may have known the tragedy of losing a child or a younger person and you're mourning the loss of the years that you feel robbed of. You may have known someone for over 60 years as I did. You may have known someone fleetingly but they left a mark on your soul. You know, our grief is unique to us. Some can't stop weeping. Others wish that they could shed tears, but they're just left with a dull ache inside that sadly some interpret as them not caring. But you know, our grief is just that. It's our grief. And we're all different. The emotional roller coaster that, that loss puts on us points to the value of the one we've lost. In our time of remembrance, we're going to give thanks for the impact that these dear people have had on our lives. One of the most misquoted lines in literature was written by Alfred Lord Tennyson when he penned the words, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. People often quote it as a reference to romantic love. But you know, it wasn't about romance. Tennyson wrote these words, after the death of his best friend, Arthur Hallam. Incidentally, Arthur Hallam was romantically linked to Tennyson's sister. Tennyson wrote these words just before the first Christmas they would spend without this loved one at the dinner table. He wrote, I hold it true, whate'er befall, I feel it when I sorrow most. It is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And I share this, you know, to remind us that the ongoing pain, the continuing sadness, is a reflection of the mark that people have left on our lives. And in our time of remembrance, I'd like us to do three things. First of all, remember. Think beyond the grief, the painful times, the sadness that can engulf you sometimes. Remember the things that made you smile and laugh. Things you did with each other and for each other. Remember the better times, if you like. Secondly, give thanks. Give thanks for the impact that these folk have had on your life. Whether they were like the sun always shining over your life for as long as you can remember, or maybe they were like a shooting star that left a blaze of light over your life for all too brief a time. Be thankful as you remember them. And finally, which is something preachers say to give you hope, finally, be kind to yourself. 
Be kind to yourself. You know, it is possible to give yourself a hard time in a season of loss and bereavement, regretting things you did do or things you didn't do. Lay them down. Lay them down. Because the journey of grief is long enough without carrying extra weight. Another famous poet said, does the road go uphill all the way? And you know, sometimes it really feels like that. But as we remember our loved ones together, we give thanks for the difference they made to our lives. Let us remember together. Thank you, Pastor Styles. Memory is one of our finest possessions. At such a difficult time, we need to treasure our memories more than ever and preserve them in honour of those we have lost. Now let us put those words into practice and take some time to remember our loved ones and be thankful for the time we had with them. Margaret Acton Marie Alexander Thomas Alexander Mason Tate Joseph Archer Barbara Bacon Betty Ball Tony Bannister Paul Barker Frank Bark, Josie Bark, Margaret Bark, Morris Barker, Elsie Barker, Linda Francis Barr, Neil Barrett, Norman Sidney Barrett, David Arthur Bartram, Patrick Anthony Bow, Nora Bow, Winifred Borg, Gillian Gillian Beardo, Eric Bellingham, Joan Doreen Birkin, Tony Bishop, Cecil Bishop. Thomas Edward Bourne Robert Bowen Colthurst Sue Brown Patrick Brady Agnes Brady Sidney Brown John Albert David Burgess Bruna Buxton Alan George Chambers Josephine Chambers Colin Cheatham John Clay Cynthia Enid Clifton Frank George Clifton Geoffrey Collingwood Kenneth Compton Elsie Gertrude Crisp Keith Allen Cullen Mary Rose Darmanin Norman Dawes Frederick Dean Keith Dennis David Dicken Kenneth Walter Doxey Anne-Marie Dwyer Robert Eagle Stanley James Eberly Amelia Scarlet Edge John Farrington Peter Fern Phyllis Fern Sheila Fisher Graham Fleetwood Patricia 
Pat Fower, Kath Freeman, Josepina Fraser, Brenda Gertrude Frost, David Gallagher, Maureen Gallagher, Thomas Ian Garbutt, Margaret Gaskin, Keith Gaunt, Leslie Gibson, Stuart Gilliver, Norman Giltrap, David Grattan, Derek Randall Goodwin, Ken Goodwin, Janet Goodwin, Alison Ruth Goodwin, Mick Gregory, Michael Hackett, Norma Hammond, Val Harkham, Brian Harkham, John Hartland, Reg Hathaway, Jean Haynes, Rachel Hearn, Barry John Heck, Dennis Hettenstall, Philomena Holland, David Holland, Kelvin Holland, Linda Irene May Holmes, Simon Holmes, Lillian Queenie Howe, Ruth Hudson, Robert Huntley, Tim Jackson, Valerie Keeling, Sid Keane, Isabel Kinsella, Ronald George Lambert, Pamela Langslow, David Legg, Derek Linda, Ronald Barry Lucas, Eleanor Maguire, Donald Maguire, George Manners, Christian Midgley, Tammy Minchel, Alan Moody, Martin Mulligan, David John Much, Eamon Murray, Henry Murray, Kevin Murray, Mona Murray, Pat Murray, Baby Mary Tubman, Hugh O'Neill, Lucy O'Neill, Baby Erin Lucy Brown, Sheila Ann Osborne, Philip Leslie Parks, Elizabeth O'Toole, Kevin O'Toole, George Phyllis Kirk, Cynthia Pike, Andrew Pinnock, David Poole, Kevin Power, John Poynton, Audrey Prime, Vince Rafferty, Alan Rackham, Alma Rackham, Michael Rackham, Rini Williams, Alec Rankin, Brian William Richardson, Eva Anne Ritchie, James Robinson, Peter Rochford, Eileen Rose, Dorothy Rosser, David Michael Rolls, Leslie Russell, Barry Rutter, Robert Saddington, Bernard Allen Salt, Colin Savage, Margaret Savage, Dennis Seabridge, Betty Seabridge, Derek Randall Sharrett, Douglas Leonard Shelton, Brian Shilton, Elaine Shorthouse, Alan Smith, Linda May Spivey, Bill Spike, Joan Squires, 
Keith Staley, Maria Deitch Stanley, Dorothy Ruth Strange, Samuel Stratton, Peter Stewart, Betty Stewart, Lynn Talbot, Alexander Richard Taylor, Gordon Taylor, Jean Taylor, Stephen Thornhill, Margaret Tizer, Joseph Titterington, Susan Tivy, David Toe, Liz Toe, Barbara Tomlinson, Edna Tomblin, Trevor Tomblin, Malcolm Toothill, Hazel Towel, Wendy Wallace, Mary Ellen Ward, Sydney Wass, Jacqueline Waterworth, Cynthia Watson, Christine Wielden, Christine Wetton, Annetta White, Joseph Bill Wild, Melvina Wilkin, Hazel Williams, Keith Williams, Ray Williams, John Windle, Sheila Wood, Pete Wood, Pamela Wood, Peter Young, Lloyd Zimmer, Eileen Roach, Brenda May Winton, Paula May Lees, Nigel Scattergood, Sheila Chapel, David Eilef. going down, we remember them. In the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we know to share, we remember them. As long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us. We remember them. May you find the joy in the season. May you find the peace in its reason. And may you find blessings in Christmas. We now welcome Reverend George Crossley from St Mary's and St Chad's Churches, Burton. One of my favourite Christmas carols is God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. The verses tell the Christmas story and the tune is a traditional folk tune, uh, which I would as happily sing in a pub as I would in a church. The chorus is simple and to the point. O oh, tidings of comfort and joy, Comfort and joy, O oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy, it's what we all desire at the moment, but something we might feel is a bit in short supply. It's been quite a year and we all know it. You may well have suffered personal loss and when you needed comfort, family and friends, they were not able to be with you. The world around us has been more unpredictable than we could have imagined a year ago. Last year, the thing that might have worried us most was Brexit. Ah, 
and we will see what that now seems. We've had unrest in the United States arising from the murder of George Floyd and people's response to it, both in hope and in anger. We've watched as the United States presidential elections have played themselves out. We've witnessed the reality of global warming and of course we've lived for months with lockdown followed by restrictions on what we could and could not do and then lockdown too and we'll be living with Covid and its aftermath for months if not years to come. What we really desire are tidings of comfort and joy. We're possibly over familiar with the Christmas story and it's wrapping up in enjoyable tradition and warm feelings not that there's anything wrong with that in itself. In one of the Gospels, the Bible speaks of Jesus' birth as the time in which the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. We may be living through dark times and experiences, but the light shines in the darkness and the light will prevail. This is indeed tidings of comfort and joy. God's grace in, our, in the dark times. The dark times will pass. There will again be times of joy, times of comfort and joy, of being with friends and family, of once again being able to share our sorrows and share our joys as well. And so a prayer. At this time, when all around us seems to remind us of what is missing, we bring our aching hearts and our empty spaces to God. Wherever we know darkness, we pray for new light to shine upon us and to guide us forward, even if with faltering steps. We hold before God our family and friends and all who need to know a healing touch in their lives this Christmas time. You, O oh God, were born among us as a child. Remind us that we are all your children and that those we care for on earth and in heaven are safe with you. Bless us as we trust that you know our needs and hear our every thought and prayer. Help us to share with you our good days and our bad and to know you walk with us day by day. Journey with us and our feelings this Christmas time. O oh God, remind us of your precious gift of love. As we grieve for ourselves and for one another, help us to look forward to a time when your peace and joy may find a home in our hearts and inspire us again for the future. In the name of the coming Prince of Peace we pray. Amen. We light our first candle for hope. We remember the people who have made us hopeful in the past and those who still make us hopeful today. We light this candle in the hope that we can find some new light in the darkness. We light our second candle for peace. We remember those who are at peace now and the pain we feel without them. We light this candle in the hope we will find peace again. We light our third candle for joy. We remember times of laughter and celebration and those with which we shared. But also the sadness we hold while others seem so happy around us. We light this candle in the hope that we might find joy in the small things again. We light our fourth candle for love. We remember those who we have loved and those who have loved us in return. We light this candle to remember that death cannot separate us from those we love and they remain in our hearts. We have now come to the end of this year's memorial service and I'd like to take the opportunity to say a huge thank you to all the clergy 
and the celebrants who have joined us today. And I especially would like to thank Joan and Danny for their many tireless hours of work in filming and organising today's service. Along with my team who agreed to take part and have helped look after you and our families over this last year. I hope this service has brought you some peace and comfort and enabled you to remember the ones you love in your own unique way. Losing someone we love is never easy, but I feel that during this pandemic that losing someone you love has been extraordinarily difficult. Please remember you are not on your own. There are charities and organisations that offer bereavement support and you can reach out to them, details of which will be at the end of this service. Remember also my caring and patient team who are only at the end of a telephone should you need any help and advice. We pride ourselves in offering a service that does not end once we have helped you to say goodbye to your loved one. Finally, I'd like you to know that starting Sunday the 13th of December, for the 12 days leading up to Christmas, clergy and celebrants in turn will deliver a message to you. And it is hoped that this message will be a great comfort on the days leading up to Christmas. Thank you.